Section 1. Listening Comprehension In this section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers you hear. Do not take notes or write in your test book at any time. Do not turn the pages until you are told to do so. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Listen to an example. On the recording, you will hear, That exam was just awful. Oh, it could have been worse. What does the woman mean? In your test book, you will read A. The exam was really awful. B. It was the worst exam she had ever seen. C. It couldn't have been more difficult. D. It wasn't that hard. You learn from the conversation that the man thought the exam was very difficult and that the woman disagreed with the man. The best answer to the question, what does the woman mean, is D. It wasn't that hard. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number one. Can you take a shot of this? Yes, I can. There's still a little film left in the camera. What is the man most likely doing? Number two. Would you like to stop in here for a few minutes for a snack or a drink? That sounds like a good idea. I certainly am thirsty. What does the man mean? Number three. I'm going to stop in at this shop and get a couple of magazines to read. But the plane is taking off soon. What does the woman mean? Number four. Do you get to many of the university's football games? Only rarely. What does the man mean? Number five. Have you met the new neighbors yet? No, I haven't. Why don't we go call on them? What does the man mean? Number six. What do you think of this accounting report? It doesn't seem to have been done very carefully. What does the man imply about the report? Number seven. Will Dr. Burton be the speaker at tonight's conference? As far as I know. What can be inferred about the man? Number eight. 
Do you know when you're going to be ready to leave? I hope we can go a bit later in the evening. I'd like to get a little rest before we go out. What does the man want to do? Number 9. That musical production was truly magnificent. I'll say. What does the man mean? Number 10. The results have been confirmed by several independent researchers. Then they must be accurate. What does the man say about the results? Number 11. How did Anna react to the situation? She couldn't have been more delighted. How did Anna feel about the situation? Number 12. Has the lawyer received the letter yet? The letter was delivered to the lawyer's office by courier just this morning. What does the woman mean? Number 13. Do you think you'll be able to find someone else to head this committee? No problem. You're off the hook. What does the woman mean? Number 14. Doesn't Kathy have to work tonight? Luckily, she was able to persuade her roommate to take her shift. What does the man say about Kathy? Number 15. Can I have an ashtray, please? Oh, smoking isn't permitted here. You'll have to extinguish your cigarette. What does the woman ask the man to do with the cigarette? Go on to the next page. Number 16. I'm going to work really hard this year and see if I can graduate in June. It doesn't sound easy, but I don't think it's an unreachable goal. What does the woman think? Number 17. Were you able to get a new computer? If the computers hadn't gone on sale, then I just couldn't have afforded to buy one. What does the woman imply? Number 18. Can you tell me about any previous office experience you have? I've worked as a receptionist in a doctor's office for a year and a half. What is the woman probably doing? Number 19. Did you enjoy the theater performance last night? It wasn't all I had hoped for. What does the woman say about the performance? Number 20. 
It's an awfully long walk home, and I'm more than a little tired. Let's take the bus instead of walking. Then you'll be able to get home quickly and get some sleep. What does the woman suggest? Number 21. The fee for this course is $100. How can the fee be $100? It wasn't that much last semester. What does the woman say about the course? Number 22. Tom's not at home now. He's at work at the architectural firm. Then he did get the job. What had the man assumed about Tom? Number 23. How serious was the accident? Well, the motorcycle rider was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. What does the woman mean? Number 24. Do you prefer to work on this assignment alone or together? In this case, I think that two heads are better than one. What does the man mean? Number 25. Can you finish this project within the next two hours? What you're asking for is not impossible. What does the man mean? Number 26. What did you think of the new art gallery? I couldn't have been more impressed. What does the man say about the art gallery? Number 27. Did you spend very much time on this assignment? Only rarely have I put so much time into an assignment. What does the woman mean? Number 28. I can't believe it actually snowed here. We rarely get snow this far south. I wish it had been a little colder. Then the snow might have stuck around longer. What does the man mean? Number 29. I've got to get over to the chemistry lab. There are only a couple more hours until the lab closes, and I've still got a lot more to do. So you haven't finished the lab assignment yet. What had the man assumed about the woman? Number 30. I didn't realize before how tall this building is. There can't be too many more flights of stairs to go. If only the elevator hadn't been broken, then we wouldn't have had to climb all of those stairs. What does the woman imply? This is the end of Part A. Go on to the next page.
Now read along with me as I read the directions for Part B. Remember, you should not read ahead or turn the pages while the directions for this part are being read. Part B. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation between two students. Hey, Gloria, how would you like to increase the extent of your educational and historical background? Steve, I don't understand what you're saying at all. I just took my final in History 101 this morning, and I'm trying to get rid of the books. They cost $80. Why don't you try to sell them back to the bookstore? I tried, but they'd only refund $20, and I paid so much more for them. I'd like to get at least $40. Well, I'm not going to take History 101, so I'm not really interested in those books. Maybe you should ask some other friends. I already have. Everyone I know has already taken History 101 and doesn't want those books. Why don't you put up some advertisements in the History Building? Maybe someone you don't know will call you and buy them. I'll try. But I don't think that'll work. Then you'll have to go back to the bookstore. After all, $20 is better than nothing. Number 31. What is the topic of this conversation? Number 32. Why is the man interested in selling his books? Number 33. Why does the man not want to sell the books to the bookstore? Number 34. What does the woman suggest that the man do? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a conversation about sleeping habits. Did you know that the average time that people spend sleeping decreases considerably as they get older? Really? I would have thought that the opposite was true, that people needed more sleep when they were older. No. Studies clearly show that the need for sleep decreases rather than increases with age. I was just reading a journal article for my psychology class, and it contained some really interesting information about sleep. Really? What did you find out? Well, young babies required the most sleep, and that should come as no surprise. The average one-year-old sleeps about 13 hours a day. People in their 20s need about eight hours of sleep a night. Well, that sounds about right to me. That's my age group, and I know I'm at my best when I'm able to sleep that much each night. What about older people? Well, the average amount of sleep decreases with age. And in the study I read, the average amount of sleep for people in their 50s was between five and six hours a night. That's really surprising to me. I expected the opposite to be true. Number 35. What information surprised the man? Number 36. Where did the woman learn this information about sleep?
Number 37. What is the man's age group? Number 38. Approximately how many hours of sleep per night do 50-year-olds require? This is the end of Part B. Go on to the next page. Now read along with me as I read the directions for Part C. Remember, you should not read ahead or turn the pages while the directions for this part are being read. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, Read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you will hear, Listen to an instructor talk to his class about painting. Artist Grant Wood was a guiding force in the school of painting known as American Regionalist, a style reflecting the distinctive characteristics of art from rural areas of the United States. Wood began drawing animals on the family farm at the age of three, and when he was 38, one of his paintings received a remarkable amount of public notice and acclaim. This painting, called American Gothic, is a starkly simple depiction of a serious couple staring directly out at the viewer. Now listen to a sample question. What style of painting is known as American Regionalist? In your test book, you will read A. Art from America's inner cities B. Art from the central region of the U.S. C. Art from various urban areas in the U.S. D. Art from rural sections of America The best answer to the question what style of painting is known as American Regionalist is D, art from rural sections of America. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Now, listen to another sample question. What is the name of Wood's most successful painting? In your test book, you will read A, American Regionalist, B, the Family Farm in Iowa C. American Gothic D. A Serious Couple The best answer to the question, what is the name of Wood's most successful painting, is C. American Gothic Therefore, the correct choice is C. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to a talk by a student advisor on campus. I'm Ms. Morton, your advisor. I'd like to explain the policies for dropping classes at this school. It's important to understand these policies or your grades can suffer. The policy at this school is that you can drop a course within the first three weeks of the semester. To drop a course, you first need to get the signature of the professor of the course you want to drop on an official drop card. Then you need to come to me to get the signature of your advisor. Let me give you a couple of strong warnings. First, you cannot officially drop a course after the first three weeks of the semester. If you are having problems in a course and you decide later on that you want to drop the course, it is impossible to do so. Second, if you stop attending a course without going through the official drop procedures, the course will remain on your schedule and you will receive a failing grade. It is important for you to understand these procedures and follow them. If you do so, you will not have any problems. 
Any questions? Number 39. What is the primary topic of the talk? Number 40. When can a student officially drop a course? Number 41. How many signatures are necessary to drop a course? Number 42. What happens if a student stops attending a course without officially dropping it? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a talk about the California Gold Rush. The California Gold Rush, which figured so prominently in the development of the West, was actually the result of a chance happening. Captain John Sutter received the rights to a large piece of land near what is today Sacramento in Northern California. Sutter's main purpose was to develop a lumber business from the huge expanses of trees on his property. It was during the construction of a sawmill for his lumber business that gold was found on the bank of the American River. As news about the gold spread, thousands of gold prospectors descended on Sutter's property. Sutter's business was destroyed by the prospectors, and Sutter received little from the gold that was found there. Although Sutter died a poor and disheartened man, the population of California increased tremendously because of what was found on his property. Number 43. What kind of business was Sutter undertaking? Number 44. When was gold discovered on Sutter's farm? Number 45. What benefit did Sutter receive from the discovery of gold on his property? Number 46. What is the speaker's main point in this lecture? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a talk to university students. This lecture series is intended to help students at this university benefit more from their studies here. The topic of tonight's talk is how to manage your time. Time is a very important commodity when you are a university student. There simply never seems to be enough of it to go around. You will need to attend classes, study, complete homework assignments, work on research, eat, sleep, perhaps hold down a part-time job, and maybe actually find time to relax for a moment or two. So a very important skill for you to learn is to manage your time. If you manage your time wisely, I think that you'll find there is enough of it to go around. One valuable tool in time management is to monitor how you spend your time for a week. Then, after you spend this week monitoring your time, you can evaluate what you have done with your time and learn to make the best use of it. During this week of personal time monitoring, you should divide each 24-hour day into 15-minute blocks, so each day has 96 blocks of time. Then write down how you spend each 15-minute period. I know that it is bothersome to write all of this information down for a week, but the benefits of such a study can be great. At the end of a week, you will see just how much time you have spent productively and how much time you have not.
The specific assignment that I have for each one of you is to spend the next week conducting your personal time monitoring study. At the end of this week, you should make an appointment with me to discuss your results. Number 47. What is the topic of this talk? Number 48. What valuable tool in time management is discussed here? Number 49. How long should this study take? Number 50. What should the students do at the end of the study?